Hey folks, Scott Dutton here. I'm at home in my little garden here. I've got a pond. I've had a lot of problems with uh, cane toads, but <laughs> that's not the point of this video. <laughs> anyway, I've um, done 127 trainings and keynotes for this year. 74% um, to be precise have been virtual and the rest face to face. And um, I, I did some reflection and I thought, what? What have I learnt? What, what insight have I gained from this year? So I come up with my top six. <laughs> so the first one is getting the right balance between living and meditating, which I do, and trying to have a balance in my personal life as well as professionally. And of course, when we started our business 20 years ago, my partner and I, it was really hard to get work. And that was the stress. And now, uh, not a bad problem to have, but I probably have too much work. And now my challenge is not overdoing it, not stressing myself out. I want to make every keynote or training I do engaging, fun, interactive, and really helpful. So I want to prepare. I tailor every training I do. And so part of my challenge is how do I have time to do that? And when you have too much work, it becomes difficult and becomes stressful. So I've had to find a way to try to balance that. It means sometimes saying no to some of the work, which is not easy. The other part of that, or the second one I have, is around being sticking to my lane. So my lane is conflict, communication, and team culture. And sometimes I get asked to do other things that are sort of related, but they're not really. <laughs> and what I end up doing is spending hours and hours preparing and creating a new training or a keynote and then I don't really use it post post that session and I, I've learned I've just got to stick to the things I know and I do well and don't go out of my lane. Scott, I'm saying that to myself. <laughs> the third one is a really good one and I'm sure many people experience this but around limiting beliefs. I've had to challenge some of those limitations that I have on myself and I have been doing for a few years, but I had a really interesting scenario this year where I did two keynotes on the same day, exactly the same topic on difficult conversations. And the first group loved it. They were engaged, they were having fun. I got some fabulous feedback. And then I did exactly the same keynote in Sydney, same day, and they weren't as enthusiastic. And it really helped me to challenge my, one of my limiting beliefs that if people are not enthusiastic, it doesn't mean they're not gaining from it because I got some good feedback post that. Uh, but I often expect or want people to just love it and jump up and down, not jump up and down, but just really enjoy it and see that. And so I used to take it personally and think that I wasn't doing a good job if they weren't doing that. So that's been really helpful. Uh, my fourth one, which sort of links into that, is around what is reasonable feedback. Now, sometimes I get feedback and it can be quite negative. Now, not much. <laughs> Let me clarify. <laughs> A lot of people, I guess, really, really lovely and, and good. And But I do want to get some of the stuff that I can improve. I want to keep improving as a trainer, as a keynote. But sometimes people give me feedback that I feel is unreasonable that it's sort of a bit below the line and it's more having a dig or having a go for whatever reason and I've had to learn to not listen to that feedback and know when to listen, when not to listen which I think is sometimes tricky to work out. <laughs> the next one's a tricky one to talk about but they often talk about speakers and trainers you know, choosing speakers who are good to work with well, do you know what? It goes the other way too. <laughs> I have a lot of clients that I work with uh, repeat business and they bring me back and I really enjoy them, they enjoy me and they're good to work with. They're organized, they communicate well, they're not trying to rip me off. But I've had a few this year or over the years where they don't treat me so well and they're not responsive or they cherry pick things to sort of create an adversarial type relationship which makes no sense to me. And so I am learning to say no, to not work with clients who don't have a similar set of values. 
And that's not easy because that is saying no to work. And what I've learned is that often the ones who have very different ways of working, we don't work that well together anyway. And it's not about not being flexible. It's more about are we on the same page? Are we trying to make this collaborative, make the best we can be and do, do a good job for each other? And so I've, I'm learning to say no to some clients who aren't working in that way. And my final learning uh, for the year was be spontaneous. I, <laughs> sometimes I turn into an adolescent. Uh, <laughs> In a this a little bit of context in a training when I'm doing conflict resolution for people who are working with adolescents, but it's that spontaneity. It's using uh, a reaction from the audience and a keynote and jumping on that and playing with that, and that's when I find people really become present. They enjoy it. They have a laugh. They get involved, and it's something that I'm learning to do more of. And it's really about trusting myself trusting my intuition and trying stuff out that's a bit risky not silly risky but a bit risky and sometimes it works <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't but when it works it can be very powerful so thanks for listening folks they're my insights uh, uh enjoy your christmas enjoy your break 